Mr. McCoy back with the ninth edition of Deep and Dark and Dangerous. As you recall, Ali was talking to Sissy about what happened the last summer that Dulcie and Claire were at the lake. I hesitated and dropped my voice to a whisper. Do you know? Sissy tugged her bathing suit strap into place and got to her feet. That's for me to know and you to find out, she said with a smirk. I jumped up and faced her. You don't know anything, and neither does anyone else. You're making up stories, that's all. Think what you want. See if I care. Sissy turned her back on me and ran down the beach toward the cove. I watched her until I could see I couldn't see her anymore. Brat, did she really know something, or was she lying? With one kick, I demolished her castle and then splashed home through the water, sending the minnows racing for cover. The next time I saw her, I'd tell her to stay away from Emma and me. Emma was perched on the boathouse steps waiting for me. In the studio, Dulcie had Wagner turned up loud. Wagner, actually, that is a composer. I could see her through the door painting another canvas with dark shades of purple and gray. A stormy day at the lake, I guessed. Where have you been? Emma asked. For a walk. Did you see Sissy? I watched a gull land on one of the dock's pilings. No, I lied. I wonder where she is. Emma gazed up and down the shore as if hoping to spot Sissy. Oh, she'll turn up one of these days, I said. Sure, it was true. No, no matter how much I wished she'd go away, Sissy would keep coming back. She probably didn't have any other friends who'd want to play with someone like her. She'd better. Next to you, she's my best friend. Emma followed me up to the cottage, looking back every now and then, still hoping. Let's play a game said, thinking I might get her off her mind off Sissy. How about Candyland? Okay. Although she didn't sound very enthusiastic, Emma watched me pull the box down from a shelf stacked with checkers, dominoes, Chinese checkers, clue, parcheesi, chutes and ladders, everything you could possibly want to play. I laid the board on the floor between us, While Emma picked out four green playing pieces, I noticed that Mom and Dulcie had written their names in two corners of the board. The handwriting was loopy and childish, and I imagined my mom with a crayon in her hand, laboriously printing Claire. What's that say? Emma pointed to the names. Dulcie and Claire. I guess this was their game. How about this? Emma pointed to a scribbled over place on the third corner. What's it say? Under a dark smear of black crayon, I made out the letters T-E-R-E-S-A. Teresa, I said. It says Teresa. I stared at the board. A little prickle as sharp as a razor raced up my spine and tickled my scalp. Teresa, T for Teresa, the girl torn from the photograph, the girl I dreamed about. Was her name Teresa? Right now is a great time to share what you think with your fellow listener. Why did somebody scribble on her name? Emma asked. I don't know, I said, but I'd find out. Maybe Mommy didn't like her, Emma said. Maybe not. Suddenly uneasy, I picked up the dice. It was weird how the cottage changed when evening shadows gathered in its corners. Do you want to go first? We played three rounds, but it was hard for me to keep my mind on the silly game. My eyes returned again and again to Teresa's name. Who was she? Why was her name almost hidden by layers of black crayon? Why had she been ripped out of that photograph? 
I had to find out. At the dinner table, Dulcie asked us what we'd done all afternoon. We played Candyland, Emma said. I won two games, and Allie won one. She says I'm a champ. She held up my arms and flexed her muscles. She held up her arms and flexed her muscles. Dulcie laughed. You've always been a champ. Emma paused, her fork halfway to her mouth. Who was Teresa, Mommy? Teresa? Dulcie stared at Emma, her body tense. I don't know anyone named Teresa. Why? She quickly got to her feet and began to gather the plates. The knives and forks rattled. The glasses clinked. She wrote her name on your Candyland game. Emma followed Dulcie to the kitchen, but somebody scribbled all over it with black crayon. I don't know what you're talking about. Dulcie scraped leftovers into the trash, her face hidden. I'll show you. Emma ran to the living room and came back with the Candyland board. See, here's your name and Aunt Claire's name, and right there is Teresa's name. Dulcie glanced at the board and shrugged. Our mom used to buy stuff at church rummage sales. Some girl named Teresa probably owned the game before us, so we wrote our names and scribbled hers out. It was a good explanation, but I didn't quite believe it. Something about that name upset Dulcie. She was tense, anxious. Remember that photo I told you about? I asked her. The one where the girl had been torn out? Well, her name started with T, and I was wondering, will you please stop talking about it? How often do I have to tell you I don't know Teresa? I don't know why her name is on that stupid game board, and I don't know who the girl in the picture was. She could have been named Tilly, or Trudy, or Tony. Dulcie's sharp voice startled both Emma and me. I stared at my aunt, puzzled. Why was she so angry? Don't be mad, Mommy, Emma begged, close to tears. I'm not mad. Dulcie plunged her hands into the soapy water and began washing the dishes with swift, jerky movements. If she weren't careful, she'd break everything in the sink. I grabbed a dish towel. Want me to dry? Keeping her back turned, Dulcie shook her head. I'd rather you read to Emma. But Mommy, Emma began. Go with Allie, Dulcie said. I need some time to myself. Emma followed me into the living room and sat beside me, her small face glum. I put my arm around her and drew her so close I could smell the sweet scent of her hair. Would you like to hear another chapter about the Moffats? I asked. Emma nodded and snuggled against me. While I read, I thought about my aunt's reactions to Emma's questions. She remembered Teresa. I was sure she did. Why wouldn't she admit it? Share what you're thinking right now with your fellow listener. The next morning I slept late, probably because I'd tossed and turned most of the night, dreaming about Teresa. When I stumbled downstairs, eager for orange juice, I found Emma sitting at the kitchen table with Sissy. Turning her face so only I could see it, she smiled her smirky smile. Look who's here, Emma cried, obviously delighted. Sissy claimed to, came to play with me. whoop de doo I muttered. Where's Dulcie? In her studio, she's got lots to do today, so we shouldn't bother her. I took my seat at the table. Dulcie had already filled a bowl with my favorite cereal. As I added milk, I was aware of Sissy sitting beside me, close enough to touch. I wasn't in the mood to put up with her, not after a bad night's sleep. Ignoring me, Sissy busied herself pushing Cheerios around her bowl with her spoon sinking them into the milk and watching them pop up again. As far as I could see, she hadn't eaten any of them. I tapped her shoulder to get her attention. It's bad manners to play with food. Even to myself, I sounded like a crabby old lady. So, Sissy shrugged and continued to stir the cereal into a gloppy mess. So, 
If Dulcie was nice enough to fix cereal for you, you should eat it. Dulcie didn't give this to me. Emma did. I told her I wasn't hungry, but she fixed it anyway. I looked at Emma, and she nodded. Mommy wasn't here when Sissy came, so I got to be the hostess. I hate cereal unless it's got lots of sugar on it. With a frown, Sissy pushed her bowl away. Let's go to the lake, Emmy. I still have my jammies on. Get dressed then, slowpoke. Sissy followed us into the living room and flopped on the couch. I'll wait here. Leaving Sissy looking at a magazine, I took Emma to her room and helped her out of her pajamas and into her favorite yellow bathing suit. Emma ran to the living room to make sure Sissy was still there, and I dashed upstairs and yanked on my bathing suit. When I came down, Sissy was looking at the names written on the Candyland board. The minute she saw me, she shoved it aside. The board fell off the table and onto the floor with a faint thud. Candyland is a baby's game, Sissy told me. I outgrew it a long time ago. Emma likes it, I said. No, I don't. Emma stood in the doorway, frowning as if I'd betrayed her. I'm way too big to play it. You weren't too big last night, I reminded her. Well, I am today. Emma flounced past me and smiled at Sissy. Do you want to swim or build castles? Both. Sissy let Emma take her hand. I followed the two of them outside. At the top of the steps, Sissy looked back at me. You aren't invited. Sorry, but Emma doesn't go anywhere without me, I said. I don't need you to babysit me, Emma protested. She was learning to scowl exactly like Sissy. The nasty expression didn't suit her sweet little face, nor did the sly look that Sissy that she gave Sissy, hoping for her approval. Sissy ran down the steps ahead of Emma and me and stopped at the bottom, almost as if she was afraid to go farther. Is your mother in the studio? Emma nodded. She's painting a picture of the lake, all dark and scary like a storm's coming. She searched for Sissy's hand. Want to see it? Dulcie'd love to meet you, I added. Sissy took a quick look through the open door. Dulcie stood with her back to us, hard at work on another painting, darker than the first two. Lake View 3, she was calling this one. Hi, Mommy, Emma called. We're going swimming. Sissy drew in a breath sharply and ducked away as if she didn't want to be seen. Not that it mattered. Without turning around, Dulcie said, Stay close to the shore, Emma. Knee deep, remember? Sissy ran to the end of the dock and posed in a diving position. Her tanned skin contrasted with her faded bathing suit and her pale hair. Dare me? she called to Emma. Not unless you swim really good, Emma said uncertainly. The water's over your head, I added. I'll do it, if you'll do it, Sissy said to Emma. No, I grabbed the straps of Emma's suit. Emma can't swim. I can so, Emma struggled to escape. I held her tighter. You're not allowed to jump off the dock unless your mother's here. Do you do everything Mommy says? Sissy asked Emma. Are you a goody-goody girl? Emma looked confused. She has rules, I told Sissy, like everyone. Not me, said Sissy. I don't have any rules at all. I do whatever I want. With that, she jumped off the dock and hit the water with a big splash. She popped back up almost at once, laughing and sputtering. Emma's a baby. She sucks her thumb and poops her pants and drinks from a bottle. Emma began to cry. I'm not a baby. I'm almost five years old. I can do what I want to, too. With a sudden twist, Emma broke away from me and ran to the edge of the dock. Before I could stop her, she'd leapt into the lake. One second she was beside me, the next she was gone. I stared at the water in disbelief, too surprised to move. To be continued tomorrow, 
keep watching. Great things are happening as we continue to go deep and dark and dangerous.